Hello, hello, welcome back. Bienvenue. It took me forever to figure out what exactly it was that I wanted to talk about today. And then my best friend suggested that I talk about a book. Any book, which is not exactly helpful, but at the same time, I could help somebody find a new series, something different to read. And you know what? She's right. I've had several people actually ask me for different recommendations, and I think on my live stream I actually talked about several of my favorite books and my several of my favorite series, and obviously about some of my favorite uh, characters. <laughs> but here's the thing. Old books and old series, they don't always live up to our expectations when we put them under a microscope. And that's definitely what I found with the first book of one of my favorite series ever. So let's talk about the first book in an absolutely epic series that really solidified my love for supernatural horror and not exactly romance, but I guess that's part of it too. It's about real people with astronomically huge problems trying to just find stability in their life, in love, in their career. More importantly, it's about strong women proving that they have the answers. Bitten is the first book in the Women of the Other World series by Kelly Armstrong. It's a series of 13 books and plenty of short stories to go along with it. And to this day is still one of my favorite series ever. It's hard to knock women who are literally railing against the patriarchy out of that top spot, like Buffy or the Charmed Girls. So let's talk about Bitten. Some of you might remember that it was turned into a television series, and I'm going to state for the record right here, it's not great, and I really wouldn't bother with it. It totally missed the spirit of the books, and honestly it just seemed like more of an excuse to watch Laura Vanderport strip on screen. I'm not even being melodramatic here, it was just kind of soapy in a way that I did not enjoy, and there was gratuitous amounts of gore which I definitely did not enjoy. But if that's your thing, then you know what? Go ahead, have fun, knock yourself out. I think it's on Netflix, or at least it was at one point. But the main character, Elena Michaels, is the first and only female werewolf, because she's the only one to have survived the extremely painful transformation process. And to be a werewolf is to be one with yourself and with nature, and to really understand and come to terms with that animal part of yourself. Basically, the pack lives in a cabin in upstate New York in the middle of the woods where they spend a lot of their time running as a wolf and a human. And let me say that I know a lot of people think that fan fiction is really where their weird stuff is, but trust me, if you know where to look, actual published fiction is just as fucking weird. And I kind of like that. I say embrace your inner weird. I mean, as long as you're not hurting anybody else. People want to lump this book into YA, and trust me when I say this is not YA, especially when you take a look at the themes, the characters, the sexual relationships, the trauma. I'm going to be upfront about this. Not every relationship in this book is healthy, but unfortunately, that's life. And this book expects you to understand the difference. Most feminists will take a look at this book and say this is an abusive and an unhealthy relationship, and yes, yes it is. And you are a smart, intelligent person who has the ability to discern that. So don't expect the author to hold your hand. You need to draw your own conclusions on what you think is right and what you think is wrong. And that can be said about any piece of work. The world of the supernatural in this book is unique in a way that you have probably never read before. It has its own culture with its own set of rules and governance. And the werewolf gene is only passed down through the Y chromosome, meaning only males are born as werewolves. You can be bitten, of course, but to be bitten is to go through an excruciatingly painful transformation that you're probably not going to survive. Meaning not enough women have actually been bitten and not enough of them have survived. That makes Elena the only female werewolf to have survived, and that's probably because Jeremy is one of the most patient people in the world and did something that nobody else probably could. Of course, Elena was also bitten against her will, which brings in this whole new subplot of consent and people being in positions of power and using that against you or 
respecting women and their choices. Of course, Elena was also bitten against her will. So there's this entire new subplot of consent that runs through the entire book. But not only that, it's about men in positions of power and respecting women and their choices. You also have this entire argument of nurture versus nature come into play. Can someone really learn new behavior? Can somebody really change? This is the part where feminists point and say that this is not okay. And you know what, that's kind of the point. To be honest with you, I don't really like the character of Clay. I don't like that Elena ended up back with him. I think honestly she should have like hooked up with Nick and settled down with him. Because basically in the end what you have is Elena going back to her abusive partner, one that she had already escaped. This book goes into the whole consent and rape metaphor pretty heavy handed. But then it turns around and has her get back with her abusive ex. It's not great. Could Kelly Armstrong have done better? Oh yes, definitely she could have. And as she's matured as an author, she definitely has. I have said it before and I will say it again until the end of time. You can still enjoy something that is problematic or is created by somebody who is problematic. I'm not gonna throw Buffy out the window just because Joss Whedon is a complete turd. It's about educating yourself and recognizing problematic behavior. It's about understanding where your morals lie. Fiction is about creating a world in which you can look at ethics and come to understand and recognize that something is a detriment to you or society. But honestly, this isn't what I love about the book. In fact, it's actually something that I kind of dislike about the book. It was written back in 2001, and this is when supernatural fantasy was really big. It was also the time when love triangles were really oddly one-sided and just uncomfortable. But what I really love about this book is the world building. It's modern fantasy and magical realism. You have people who are different, just trying to survive in the world which is basically what we're doing every single day. You have an entirely new culture that you're being exposed to. There is a whole set of rules that you need to learn. There is a new set of hierarchies that you need to know. Werewolf transformations are not dictated by the moon. They're not bloodthirsty killers, but they do adhere more to their animal logic than they do to human integrity and they can be killed by ordinary means. It doesn't take silver or some magic plant to finish them off. I admire someone who can take something as old and tired as werewolves and create a brand new mythos that will absolutely captivate you. One where your heroes are morally gray. The world isn't black and white. And the characters, despite being supernatural, are far more human than you can ever imagine. They don't always make the right decision, and they definitely don't always make the decision that you want them to make. And that only makes them more human. Is this Kelly Armstrong's best work? No, absolutely not. But it is an entirely new world that you have the chance to fall completely in love with. And you can also watch the author's slow growth over the entire series as she creates more complex and relatable characters. And you get to watch as she learns to turn her voice in a more positive direction. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.